Welcome to Space News from the Electric Universe, brought to you by the Thunderbolts Project at thunderbolts.info. Between May and December of 2002, a remarkable event occurred in the heavens. A previously unknown star named V838 Mon brightened suddenly and spectacularly, then faded, then leaped back to life. At its brightest, it was about a million times brighter than our sun, making it one of the most luminous stars in the Milky Way. It all occurred within a few months, though theoretical models say that stars just don't act this way. The models say that stars evolve along predictable paths over billions of years. Confronted with these events, astronomers again return to the drawing board. Popular scientific media have made no mention of electrical considerations for V838 Mon, but Dr. Don Scott is willing to muse on the electrical possibilities. My first impression was when I first saw this thing, and gee whiz, this is a, this is a very new and never seen before kind of object. You've got this thing, this star, that goes from uh, almost invisibility, it's so dim, to a tenth magnitude. I said in my book there, the Australian uh, amateur, Nicholas Brown, uh, photographed a tenth magnitude star where there wasn't any star before, and everybody said, Woo, wow, a new star. And then a few, few months later, all of a sudden, it's up to magnitude six, which is horrifically bright. You almost see it with the naked eye. Then there's this big cloud around it. All of that, that list of properties that this thing has, is exactly what the electric universe says would occur if a star just fissioned, broke apart. And it probably was because it, the more electrical current going into the star, the more the star is under electrical stress. There are a high number of amperes per square meter of the area of the star. Walt Thornhill, I, and several of the other guys have this idea that electrical fissioning is what makes binaries. Some 60% of all the nearby stars are binaries. How could they form that many double star, and triples and, and all sorts of stars? Castor, I think, is a is six stars together. There's, there's three stars, and each one of them is a binary. So there's a total of six stars dancing around each other. Okay, how did that happen out of an accretion disk? The number of stars at that dim level is such a cascade of objects that nobody paid any attention to this thing before it just all of a sudden brightened to 10th magnitude. Common theory describes how stars run out of nuclear fuel and eventually collapse in supernova explosions, all predicated on the idea that stars are fueled by nuclear fusion in their cores. But the electric star model looks first to external electric power within the immense volume of the heliosphere, and beyond that, in the vastly larger galactic environment. Astronomers apply theories of stellar evolution to different star types. By placing stars of different brightness and different spectral signatures on a graph, they codify a theoretical assumption that the graph represents an evolutionary sequence of stars from birth to death. But recent discoveries would move stars from one position to another on the billion-year diagram, all in absurdly short spans of time. When I first became aware of it, the surprising thing, of course, to me and to everybody who knows anything about the, the supposed evolution of stars, is the rapidity of the whole thing. That is, it changed from one location to another on the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram in about two months. And that doesn't happen. That, that kind of movement takes supposedly millions and millions of years. The whole sequence of, of actions, that it's a nova changed its spectral type, the spectral type means it's changed its surface chemistry. How can a star just do that? This is an unheard of kind of an operation. In electrical terms, V838 Mon adds evidence for the fissioning of stars, as single stars give birth electrically to binaries. Of course, if you stop to think about what the electric star model says about binary fissioning, if the outer layer of a star peels off like a, an onion skin, and becomes a second small binary companion, exposing the other stuff that's underneath that was never exposed before, sure, it can look very different. The electric star model explains the difference in such a short period of time. The only way astronomers think stars get formed are from accretion disks. 
And that takes millions of years, or if not billions. There's a whole family of these mysterious stars, and I can't say that V838 Monoceros has every one of these characteristics, but it has several, and there's a class of uh, sort of strange characteristics your viewers should keep in mind, and the next time NASA announces that they are shocked, shocked, <laughs> to find this new mysterious object, a member of a class of objects which have really the following characteristics. They very often announce their beginning as a gamma burst. Quickly, the gamma ray burst is followed by a nova, a bright, increasing, brilliant spot. Then the punchline, the tell-off characteristic is you get a star that rapidly changes its temperature and its luminosity and its spectral type. And so it wanders around very rapidly from place to place in the Hertzsprung-Russell diagram. Uh, it could be uh, over a course of a thousand years, could be 500 years. We've seen them now down to within the lifetime of a human. And uh, 838 Monoceros did it in a couple of months. That is rapidly in anybody's book. And then, of course, what is left after all that happens is this, this star recedes in its brightness, recedes, lowers its temperature, gets dimmer and dimmer, ends up being surrounded by a cloud of stuff, a nebula of sorts. Then, of course, there is very often a discovery, which is sort of like the, uh, the finale of this whole story, that this crazy object has now newly been discovered to be a binary star whereas it, had, it hadn't been noticed during the whole process, nor certainly before the process started. For continuous updates on space news from the Electric Universe, stay tuned to thunderbolts.info.